Hi, I'm Joshua Farnsworth, and in this video, I'll continue the workbench guide that I started last week and discuss cool accessories that are really important to use with your woodworking workbench. Last week I shared a video on five important workbench features uh, to consider and I was really surprised by the popularity of the video. Uh, I want to thank everyone who watched the video and who commented on it and I'd especially like to thank the thousands of you who subscribed to my channel. So welcome aboard. In this video I'm continuing the workbench guide by talking about accessories or fixtures that are really helpful to use with your woodworking workbench. I'll also touch on a few things that viewers have asked me to expand upon from the last video that they mentioned in the comments. And before I get started, I just want to quickly let you know that this video actually goes along with my popular workbench guide article. And below this video, you'll find a link to all my tool buying guide articles. Uh, my tool guides have a lot more detail than I have time to share in these videos. And also in my guides, I mention specific brand names and models of tools that I prefer, which I typically don't like to do so much in videos uh, because tool quality can change over time and my opinion about those brands can change. And to be honest, it's a lot easier to change an article uh, than it is to film a whole new video every time I become disappointed by a tool maker or I find a good new tool maker that I want to recommend. So I'll also be making videos for all my other guides on buying hand tools and power tools. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel below this video, uh, you'll be notified immediately when those videos are released coming soon. All right, let's jump into my six different workbench accessories that I recommend. As I mentioned in my previous workbench video, bench dogs allow you to wedge your work uh, between the tail vise and the bench dogs that sit in your bench dog holes. Uh, but I didn't go into much detail about the actual bench dogs. Bench dogs come in an assortment of materials, shapes, and sizes. Uh, most commercial workbenches come with metal bench dogs, some round and some square. Both shapes seem to work fine to me. However, there is a slight danger of seriously chipping your hand plane's iron or blade if you're not careful, and that would cause you a lot of work to regrind and rehone the iron. So on all the workbenches that I've built, I've made wooden bench dogs. And I prefer round bench dogs, primarily because I can just buy wooden dowels from the hardware store to make them. It's super easy. Also, it's much easier to add round bench dog holes to your workbench than it is to add square holes. You have to do that during the glue up of the workbench top. Just a quick tip, to make a lot of consistently sized bench dog holes and also hold fast holes, I use a plunge router with an adjustable fence and plunge as deep as I can with a three quarter inch or a one inch spiral up cut bit. Uh, it's super easy to just move down the bench as you plunge the holes. Then I finish boring the hole with a spade bit in a powerful corded drill. You can certainly do this with a brace and bit, uh, but just be prepared for it to take a lot longer. And maybe you have holes that aren't quite as tight because of some wobbling. As I mentioned, to make my bench dogs, I buy wooden dowels from the hardware store. I've used both three quarter inch oak dowels and one inch poplar dowels, and both wood species have worked just fine. I cut them to length, a little longer than the workbench's thickness is really nice. And then I use a handsaw and chisel to add a flat face to the top of the dowel. I sometimes also add a notch to the bottom end so I can hold abnormally shaped pieces of wood. And my friend Will Myers, who I showed assembling his Moravian workbench in the last video, introduced me to a pretty cool way to keep those round bench dogs from slipping down through the bench top. Uh, I bore little holes in the bench dogs and epoxy these little cabinet door latch, door catches inside. It works really great to hold the bench dog in place. Uh, square bench dogs usually have different types of spring methods for holding them in place, um, but it's kind of a similar idea. I couldn't find these brass cabinet latches in any stores where I live, but I eventually tracked them down online and I've shared a link to them in my workbench guide article. 
I've also shared recommendations to some good metal bench dogs, uh, if that's the route you'd like to take. I recently released a video where I talk in depth about holdfast, so I'll just touch on it briefly here and summarize it for those of you who didn't see that video. And I'll link to that video in the description below for those of you who want to learn more, or it'll pop up there or something. Uh, holdfasts are amazing workbench accessories. You bore holes in your bench top, and then you drop your holdfasts into one of the holes and you hit the top of it uh, to wedge your workpiece down. Uh, the holdfast wedges within the bench to hold it tight. And it's really difficult for the wood to move, which is really great when you're cutting a joint. Then when you're ready to release the holdfast, you simply just hit it on the back and it pops loose. It's actually pretty dang cool. A holdfast also allows you to hold a long board up against the leg of your workbench uh, with the other end in your vi face vise so you can hand plane. In my woodworking school, I use two different types of holdfasts. Uh, the first type, and my favorite, is a holdfast that's forged by a blacksmith. Uh, they seem to flex better and they look really great with the historical workbenches that I have. However, they're usually pretty expensive, uh, around $75 each. Uh, another good option, as I mentioned before, is a much lower priced holdfast that's made out of formed wire. It doesn't flex quite as well, but it works fine, and with a little work, I've been able to get these particular holdfasts that you see here to work in every one of my school's workbenches. And they run about, uh, I don't know, I can't remember, 15 or 20 dollars. The cheapest type of holdfasts are made out of cast iron and I find them to be too rigid and usually too short to work very well. However, one higher end toolmaker has a popular cast iron holdfast that's specifically heat treated to make it work better. I haven't tried it out, but I've heard about it. Um, I've shared a little bit more about that in my workbench guide. A bench hook lets you quickly hold your work in place while you're sawing across the grain without having to clamp your piece down on the workbench. I also use it a lot when I'm doing chisel work uh, when I'm making joints. You should really make a bench hook yourself. Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure anyone sells them, or I hope they don't. <laughs> it's too easy to make. I built all mine out of some scrap pieces of wood. The type of wood that you use uh, doesn't really matter because a bench hook is meant to be replaced when it gets worn out, it gets saw marks on it. And it should take just a few minutes to make uh, by just cutting two ends off of a board and then gluing them on opposite sides and then cutting a little notch off the, the side. And you can also make one that's a bit nicer like this bench hook that doubles as a miter box. And by cutting off the side, you'll have a small extra bench hook to support longer boards. I made a video on how to make a bench hook, which I'll share somewhere down here or up there or something. A planing stop is a workbench accessory that's used to give you a quick place to butt your wood up against when you're hand planing, when you don't want to clamp it between bench dogs. Uh, there are, of course, both affordable and expensive commercial metal planing stops where the metal claws pop up to dig into the board. They definitely are pretty cool to use, uh, but you can also just use a block of wood that slides up and down in the bench top. May not hold it quite as tight, but it's a lot cheaper. Uh, the disadvantage of this type of planing stop is that you have to mortise the stops into the top of your workbench. Um, but that may not be something that bothers you. You may look at it as a challenge. Uh, but I find it easier and cheaper to just make a planing stop out of wood. You can either make a stop that fits into your bench dogs, like this one with dowels. Some companies sell metal versions of this style of uh, bench stop or planing stop. Or my personal preference, which we use in my school, is just to make a planing stop out of a quarter inch thick board that's glued to a scrap of a, a block, a scrap block of wood. I like a thin board like this so I can hand plane smaller boards. This quarter inch poplar board can be purchased pre-milled at your local hardware store if you don't have an easy way to make thin stock. A shooting board is used to square and miter the end grain on your work pieces, like on picture framing. It can also be used to square edges of boards 
uh, it should definitely be made in your workshop. Um, although there are some pretty cool antique metal shooting boards. I'll link to some of those in my guide. Uh, so the hand plane lays on its side and it's pushed along the base to remove a little bit of wood at a time. It's like shaving until your piece is square or mitered. Uh, there are probably thousands of shooting board designs and tutorials in books and online, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding a free one that you like or a free plan that you like. And that's not too difficult for you to make. I share a few designs in my article that I personally think are cool. As I mentioned in my last video, certain types of vices like this European style vice can rack or get stretched too far if you don't have some sort of spacer in the other side of the vise. Some people make little spacer blocks of various widths to put in the vise, uh, but I've found that they don't seem to cover every board thickness and so it's always a little loose. Uh, if you dimension your own boards, you're going to need some more flexibility. So in my woodworking school, I use this extremely cool vise rack stop. It's made out of plastic which lets me micro adjust for pretty much any different wood thickness and it keeps the vise really nice and tight and keeps it from racking. Well, I sure hope this video has been helpful to you and as always if you have any questions be sure to ask uh, questions below in the comments section and while you're down there why not give a little thumbs up to this video if you liked it. It only takes a second. And make sure to subscribe to my channel because in my next uh, upcoming video, I'll be talking about different marking and measuring tools like tri-squares, marking gauges, dividers, and much more. And after that, I'll do one on hand planes and then uh, hand saws and so on and so forth. So I'd like to thank you for hanging out here at my shop today. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in woodworking with a mix of hand tools and power tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find a bunch of free woodworking lessons, workshop tours of amazing woodworkers, and our very popular tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my forum. Enjoy!